So, okay, yeah. go for it. That this, it's come to this. This is the shame I have to live is standing on little boxes, right? Is that what it's come to? Hey, why, why are you up on that thing? Everybody knows because I'm I six look three. stupid. I, you're not six three. How tall are you? Five ten. Right, and I still have to stand on a freaking box. <laughs> Hi, this is Kevin Deal from Upscale Audio, and today I'm here with John Hunter from Rel Acoustics. Hey, how are you, Kevin? Good, good. John is here to talk to us about the Rel 212SX. I, I just love Rel subwoofers. You folks know what a fan we are about Rel here at Upscale Audio. We love their stuff so much. They come down, we, we are very, very deep in our knowledge about Rel, and we try to do our very, very best. And we have them come down, we... Uh, we train employees on how they work with different subwoofers, the, uh, the different ways to set them up. I mean, it's all about knowledge. I don't care how much money you spend on a product. If you don't use it right, you may not get the best results, and I want to make sure that my staff is up to speed on that. So John is here to talk about the 212SX, and we're talking about Bob Grossman. Yes, we are. Bob is a bassoonist? He's a bassoonist, yeah, and a very good one. Yeah, with the Philadelphia Orchestra, and he bought a pair of these. He's a great magazine reviewer. And what I'm going to do, I'm going to let John go ahead and take away that story and then tell us why this is an incredible product. So, so Bob is a professional musician, right? He was a concert bassoonist for some 40 years. He knows everything. For those of you who aren't musicians who perform on stage, the intimacy of knowledge you gain about sound and various textures and things that are really difficult to capture in a recording happen for musicians because we're there, we're making the stuff on stage. You know every mistake made in every recording you've ever performed on. It's a very intimate kind of an affair for a musician to, to really get intimate with the product and really have a, 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 an incredible relationship with both reproduced and the production of it. And, and Bob is one of those rare individuals. He's a great reviewer and a great musician. So when he came to us and said, listen, um, I need a recommendation. I have a pair of Magnaplaner uh, Maggie 7s, the 20.7s, excuse me, they're big ones. Um, and, and he was looking for a recommendation. I instantly went to the 212SX because when you have a large panel like that, or you have a large speaker, right, a really big speaker, like one of the larger eclipses or something that really has massive surface area, you can't get away with a direct firing single driver. It just doesn't work that way. The physics don't work that way. So when you get into a 212SX, the beauty of it is you see these two active drivers. What you don't see is there's a down firing piston that's passive and a rear firing upper one. That surface area totals over 400 square inches of driven surface area. And I'm not here to brag about horsepower. Yes, it's got a 1,000 watt amplifier that just loafs along. All of those things, that's great. But what really winds up happening is you energize the room in multiple modes, right? You have these huge surface areas just effortlessly. You get the pistonic action of these drivers actively attacking. You've got the down firing that couples with the floor. So you have massive sort of, we call it uh, floor crawl. And then the upper one is this strange little thing that is magical. Uh, and, and, and I cannot explain the physics of it to you, but it goes like this. Because the base firing backwards couples with the wall, and, and in many cases with the actual corner, it crawls up and it literally rolls back over the ceiling. And when you hear that, there's this thing that happens otherwise only in live music. It, it, it's this delicacy, this textural stuff that happens in concert halls. And when you hear that, you can't ever unhear it. It's incredible. This is probably the closest to one of our famed six packs, the, the three piece stacks on each side that are enormously expensive and a little bit complicated to dial in, but we're getting around to showing people how to do that more and more. And there's tons of those getting out there now too. This is great for any kind of music, will work with any large speaker in a medium to large room. Don't try and put a pair of these into a small room. It'll just be too much of a good thing. But boy, you get a, a pair of these things properly dialed in and it's, this is the biggest sweetheart I've ever been around. Mm -hmm. When I did Jeff Dorgay's system, uh, Jeff's another reviewer, we did a review together with the predecessor to this about five years ago, something like that. I spent three hours perfectly dialing in the Focal Sopra threes. I paid 12 minutes to dial in a pair of these mm -hmm. things and sat him down, hit play, and he went, that's what I've been looking for for the last 40 years. That just, that immersive experience, you go, this, this is what it feels like to be in the studio listening to the playback system. It's just so raw and real. Mm -hmm. 
Yeah, it's funny, funny you mentioned Jeff Dorgay because when he had, he had a six pack of G. He had number 25. Oh, number 25, that's yeah. what it was. And uh, those were not available when he was buying them and it was gonna be kind of a squeeze for him to get them. Yeah. I don't know if you knew this or not, I was trying to talk him out of buying them because I wanted to get my hands on them <laughs> for my new sound room. So I'm gonna have, uh, I'm gonna have these folks come over to my, my the Casa del Kevin to get me hooked up with something. For, and that's the thing I gotta say, you know, my room is a pretty good sized room and I've got Focal Grand Utopias. Big speaker, yeah. very expensive speaker, but it is not about bass. You got to understand this. It is about bass, but it is about creating that real experience. And I, I don't want to stretch this video out, but I went to a demo that you did years ago where you had six packs of, maybe it was number 25s. Yeah. That's a lot of bass, but the demo that he was doing was music that was almost devoid of bass. Yeah. It was a vocalist, yeah. like in a church and they switched it in and out, and the church venue was there, and then gone. Yeah. yeah. Uh, one of your people last night, one of your senior people asked me for the difference between us and a, and a competitor, and, and I, I gave him a lot of the background to it, but it's about speed, it's about subtlety, but it's about the fact that we use analog circuits, and in the end, I said, you know what it really is? We both make bass, that's fine. Let, let, let's, let's not even get into that. It, it, we don't need to get into a, a, an ego contest. The difference between RHEL and every other subwoofer and manufacturer is we dramatically improve the other nine octaves. Yes. All subwoofers, all the good subwoofers, uh, us, the SVSs, the JLs, these are all very good companies. Mm -hmm. So when, when, when we hear people going on forums and you know, I, I see a lot of talk back from one of, their, one of those companies I mentioned, and our people t typically do, don't do that. Our, our customers, are. it's really interesting how different the companies are. You can see the culture and sort of the depth of quality of the people in, in the kind of the ways that they react online too. Mm -hmm. But our people go on and go, all I know is I, I, I tried that one and it was good. But mm -hmm. what the REL gave me was space, delicacy, air, focus, a bigger image. I mean, things I've never heard out of my system before. And that's what makes me happy when people get what we do. Mm -hmm. It's, it's, it's the way all of the deep bass, when it's properly integrated, goes straight up other the, the, the nine other octaves. Mm -hmm. And you just get air and beauty and subtlety. Bob Grossman wrote a terrific uh, review of his uh, 212SXs and he put it up on the Upscale Audio website. So make sure that you go there and go read it. I didn't even know it was there until I just happened to notice it like minutes ago. And uh, he, he said all these things from the heart. This was not a magazine review, this was his ownership. Yeah, this is yeah. his personal journey, yeah. Yeah. right? Would you mind spinning this around so I want to do that. Yeah, I'm kind of, uh, I'm like Girl, uh, a, a giddy 13-year-old uh, <laughs> making out with a girl for the first time wanting to turn this thing around. All right. All right, so here is we go. Is that okay there, Mr. Cameraman? This way? More? Okay. Yeah, we good? Yeah. So, so, as a sidebar, you know, we work hard on every detail that goes into every rel. Uh, you, you know, the, these are chrome-plated stainless steel bolts, and I do it because I remember being at, at a famous reviewer's house uh, one day, and he had a pair of very expensive mono blocks from England, and I was back there connecting up the cables. We were doing a, a Stradivari review back when I was working with Selma's father, and I'm back there connecting, and I glanced down, and all of the black oxide bolts on the back of this $32,000 pair of amps were rusting. Mm -hmm. Yeah, Michael's in New Jersey, it's, it gets humid. And, and these bolts were rusting. I'm like, oh my Lord. Okay, if I, if I ever own my own company and make things, not gonna do it. It's not gonna happen, it's offensive to me. So when you look at subwoofers, do yourself a favor and turn them around. And really look, this is the part that most people don't want you really spending any time looking at. And we're not the only people that do, that, that do this, that really care. But, but I would venture to say, this is the most beautiful back panel you'll ever see. The, the rails are just exquisite. We give you high level inputs. We give you um, XLR inputs for the point ones. We give you uh, uh, LFE and stereo. We give you everything because these allow you to have both high level and point ones simultaneously. These things in theater, oh my goodness, they're crazy. And if you've got something that's a big high efficiency speaker, like one of the larger Klipsch's, stereo pairs of these are insane. Mm -hmm. They're absolutely nuts. 
They, they, they will connect up higher than you think they would. They produce enormous deep bass, but, but they will actually travel up and connect with a speaker that, it, it, and that's a really rare facility. Most big subs have no ability to go up and reach and really make contact. Mm -hmm. So something like Eclipse La Scala, mm -hmm. great speaker, mm -hmm. runs out of gas at mm -hmm. what, 60 or something like that? Yeah, 50 you know? something, yeah. And because the right way to cross over is below that, mm -hmm. you would probably be crossing this over something like 48 hertz, that's beginning its slow, gentle descent mm -hmm. at mm -hmm. 60, 58, mm -hmm. and they, melt, you know, they meet beautifully at 52. Mm -hmm. and, and it's just fantastic. And something we got to point out is that RELs do hook up a little different than other brands. They use uh, typically, not all the time, but most of the time you're going to use a speak on connector. And I don't want to go into the weeds on this. Just know this. The subwoofer is seeing the same signal as the speaker driver is straight off the amplifier, especially with a tube amp. The beauty of it is easier, more graceful integration yeah, you just, you can't, it's with your main speakers. It's, it's just what we, what we are consistently told is, uh, when I got my RELs home, and thank you, your, your customer service people were awesome. They spent like half an hour on the phone, you know, giving me tips on how to move this and how to adjust that and what I should be listening for, and then I got it done. It was incredible because I couldn't hear the REL. It's just my speakers sounded like they were $30,000 speakers right. instead of $4,000 speakers. That's what makes us happy, right. right? You shouldn't be hearing it. You know, with, with a lot of other subwoofers, you hear it you hear their presence. You shouldn't, but you, shouldn't. you hear their, their, their powerful presence. It's suddenly injected into the system, into your room. It's like, listen to me. And with RELs, you hear it when you take ours out. Mm. You, you take a REL out and you go, oh my good God, yeah. what just happened to my system? <laughs> Can yeah. I, so somebody please put that back in right now. Yeah. And so it's a very different philosophy. The way we work is just this very organic, integrated way of, of pulling it together. As Kevin said, you have to take it straight off the amplifier. If you're listening to a good tube amp like his Prima Lunas, they have a really distinct signature and it's beautiful, right? There's this delicacy and this beauty to the way bass emerges for starters. Mm -hmm. These beautiful mid ranges, mm -hmm. right? Delicate, velvety almost. Those are textures and those are signatures that actually really should be here mm -hmm. because it's going to all travel up. So if we start with the same signal as they do, as the speakers are going to see, we get this very consistent, seamless handoff from one to the other, and that's one of the biggest yeah. biggest challenges. I yeah. love it. I love it. Anything else you want to talk about on the back? No. I think we got it. No. So look, easy. I love this subwoofer, but I love all RELs. If you have any questions, I want you to reach out to our salespeople. They're all trained on RHEL constantly. They're updated. They're improved. I mean, it's just important that we know what we're doing at Upscale Audio, and my folks don't work on commission, and as you read, there was other comments uh, on this review about our salespeople and how we work with uh, our, our customers because it's important that you don't get sold something. Go to our website, come to our beautiful store here in Southern California. Uh, yeah, I just want you to know this, and I mean this, that at Upscale Audio, we're going to treat your system like it's ours. I want to thank John Hunter. Of course. My pleasure. Thank you, Kevin. Thanks. Bye. Thanks.